I want you to imagine for a second, that I'm driving past you in a car in this direction, at 10 miles per hour. And then, for some weird reason, I decide to throw a ball out of the window. Now, this ball is traveling in the same direction that I'm going. And according to me, the ball travels at 5 miles per hour. Now you sitting there have a speed gun, and you decide to measure the speed of the ball as I throw it. What would you measure the speed to be? Well, what you'd measure, is the 5 miles per hour that I say, I can throw the ball, plus the 10 miles per hour that my car is traveling at relative to you. So you'd measure 15 miles per hour fairly straightforward, right? But what if instead of throwing a ball, I decided to switch on a flashlight in this direction instead? What would you measure? The speed of the light from the flashlight to be 10 miles per hour, plus whatever the speed of light is? No, light doesn't work this way, no matter what my car speed was, whether it's 10 miles per hour or 50 miles per hour. You would always measure the speed of light to be the same. What's even weirder, is, if I was to point the flashlight in the opposite direction to my car's travel, you'd still, measure the speed of light to be the same. Now, this is an absolutely ridiculous concept to get your head round. Einstein was the first person to properly realize that this is how light behaved. One of the postulates or assumptions that he made when he was developing his theory of special relativity was that the speed of light was constant for any observer. What I'm going to be talking about today, is how Einstein actually came up with this idea. What was the thought process behind making the assumption that the speed of light is constant for every observer? Was it just sitting around on a beach in a deck chair, and it came to him randomly? Was he that much of a genius to just dream up an idea like this? Well, he was a genius, but he didn't dream up today. We're going to be unraveling a little bit of Einstein's genius. So, roll the intro. So, how does someone come up with a crazy notion, that, no matter how fast I drive my car in this direction, you will measure the speed of light to be the same? Well, do you understand this? We need to go back a few years to a bloke, named James Clerk Maxwell. Now old Jamie boy, here was a genius himself. And nowadays, he is most well known, for a set of four equations, known as Maxwell's equations. They describe basically the entirety of electricity and magnetism, collectively known as electromagnetism. And within this wonderful theory of electromagnetism, there's a very small bit that deals with electromagnetic waves. Now, these two equations describe the behavior of electromagnetic waves. Don't worry, we don't need to know the details except for the fact that the top one describes the behavior of the electric field. And the bottom one describes the behavior of the magnetic field. Now, these two equations are very specific cases of a more general equation, known rather creatively as the wave equation. We don't need to understand any of this. I just want to make a comparison in the general wave equation. This bit here, represents the speed of the wave. Or rather, it represents the speed of the wave squared. So let's add them to be equal to each other, because they're both the speeds of waves. In other words, we can say that c squared is equal to 1 divided by mu naught epsilon naught. Or, taking square root on both sides, we can say c is equal to 1 divided by square root of mu naught epsilon naught. Now, what even are mu naught and epsilon naught? Mu naught and epsilon naught are just constants, specifically their properties of empty space, the properties of a vacuum. But as we've already said, they are just constants. But if mu naught and epsilon naught are just constants, then 1 divided by mu naught, epsilon naught is also just a constant. Interesting to fully link this topic up. What I want to do is to look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Starting on the left. We have radio waves, microwaves, infrared rays. And up there we have visible light. Light is a type of electromagnetic wave. This means that Maxwell's equations predict that the speed of light must be a constant, because as we've just in the speed of electromagnetic waves must be a constant. And light is an electromagnetic wave, by the way. As an aside, this doesn't just apply to visible light. This also applies to the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, the fact that Maxwell's equations predicted that the speed of light must be constant was a source of unease for some physicists, because this meant one of two things, either the implicit assumption that we make. That when we travel the car at 10 miles per hour, then we measure the speed of light to be 10 miles per hour, plus the speed of light from the flashlight. Either that assumption is wrong, or Maxwell's equations are wrong because they contradict each other. So one of them must be wrong. 
Einstein was the first black to properly consider the fact that our assumptions that we made might be wrong. And he was the first to develop a theory that explored the consequences of this idea. However, as we've just seen, Einstein did not pull the if a constant speed of light out of his, but there was some method to his genius. And hopefully this video has gone some way towards demystifying that bit. Einstein's theory of special relativity ended up forming the basis for his general theory of relativity, which ended up truly revolutionizing our understanding of the universe. And it all began with one small assumption, that was based on an entirely different area of physics. And that, was Einstein's genius. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be trying to make more of these kinds of videos if you enjoyed them. Let me know in the comments below. Also, tell me in the comments, what do you want me to cover in a video like this in the future? Anyway. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye bye.